Okay, so you've created your first Trello board, but what is all that stuff going on on this board? That's what this video is going to be about. I'm going to be taking you on a tour of your new Trello board, helping you understand what all those little things are and how you're intended to use them. But before we dive into this, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring that little notification bell so that you never miss a tutorial or upload. All right, let's go ahead and start here real quick with this sidebar. So the sidebar here is just a view of all of the boards in the workspace. It's there for easy navigation if you need to move back and forth between one board and another. There are other ways to do that too, including the recent tab and the starred tab. So it's not super necessary, but it is there along with access to workspace settings and adding new members to the workspace. Let's go ahead and collapse that because that's honestly not the most important thing for us right now. We're gonna start here where you see the name of the board. If you need to rename your board, honestly, if you need to rename just about anything that you create within Trello, you simply need to click into it and then you can change the name of the board. If you wanna add this board to that list of starred boards that you saw on the homepage in the last video, you would star it right there or unstar it to remove it. This is where we can see whether or not we've made this private or workspace visible or public, and you can easily change that right here. If you're in a premium account, not free or standard, but premium and above, then you have access to these different views for your board. But if you're in a free workspace or standard like me, then you don't have them. Don't worry, you can work around it for quite a while. Then moving over here to the right, we've got power-ups. This is a way for you to add additional functionality to your board, often for free. Sometimes it comes with a little bit of a cost from the person who created the power up. We'll talk about that in another video. Then we've got automation. This is where the magic happens, in my opinion. This is where you can create workflow rules, buttons. You can schedule email reports for yourselves and things like that. You have filters where you can filter by all kinds of things, keywords, assignee, whether it's due or not, labels. We'll talk about that in a second. Right here is where you will see little images or more likely it's gonna be initials of anybody who has access to the board. So as of right now, it's just me and that's all I can see here. This share button is how you would change that if you wanted to add more people, but we're gonna to touch on that in the next video. Then you've got our three dot menu. There's a lot going on in this three dot menu. So to start here, there's a place for you to put a little description of the board. If you are sharing this board with people on your team or maybe a VA or something, and you wanna make it really clear the intention behind this board, you can go ahead and jot that right here. There's also a way to do the board settings here, but we're gonna see that elsewhere as well. We've got our activity feed, and this one I gotta tell you, I use a ton. Because if you're sharing a board and you see that little, the, it, on desktop, I believe it's a little blue dot. On mobile, it's a little white dot that's indicating to you, hey, something changed on this board since the last time you were here. Well, a lot of times that happens and I go to the board and I do not know what changed. So I can come here to the activity feed and see right here anything that was just done and who did it. And then if your activity feed gets really busy and you know that there are some comments, you can filter that down straight to comments. You've also got archived items. And this I actually just learned was here because you can actually search for archived items across the entire account if you search up in the search bar here. But let's say that you accidentally archive a card on a particular board and don't worry because it happens to us all. You can come straight here and see all of the archived cards or lists from this board in particular. So it makes it a little bit easier to find those things. And then here's those board settings that I was talking about before, where you can indicate who can comment and react and do different things here. This is where those permissions are. And then this part, this one's one of my favorites. So I'm very much about the aesthetic. You can create your own custom backgrounds, which is super fun. You can choose one of their colors or little gradients that they've done or you can come here to Unsplash and actually search for images. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one because I think it's fun. If you are using a paid workspace, this is standard premium and above, then you have access to custom fields and you'd be able to create those here. There are other places you can create them, but this is one of those places. We'll touch on custom fields in the future. This is another way to access the automation and power up menus. 
And then here we can create labels, and these can be used for all kinds of things. We'll talk about them many times as we are moving through the essentials of Trello for beginners. But you can choose any one of these and just go ahead and edit it. Or as you can see, there are many other colors that you have to choose from as well. We can also add stickers to cards, which is kind of fun. It just adds a little bit of flair here and there. If you were in a premium workspace or higher, you could make this board a template. But for now, you're probably not going to have a need to do that. And then you also have the ability to watch a board, which will give you notifications for anything that happens on a board that you didn't do. So if you have other people on the board, it'll notify you when changes happen. That also works if you have an integration that is going to make changes to your board. Not so much for internal automations. That will still see it as you doing it because it is an automation you created. But let's say you have another tool using something like Zapier coming in and doing something on this board that will be notified to you as well. You can also email things to your board, copy the board and print, export, share the board or close the board. And the last thing I'm going to throw at you in this video is creating lists and cards. So let's go ahead and create some lists. And yes, I did that out of order. I did it on purpose because I wanted to be able to show you that you can actually click here and drag your lists around. So if you accidentally do it in the wrong order or maybe later you change your mind about how you want things to flow, you don't need to recreate anything. You can drag everything around. There's a couple of little icons on these lists that you can see. There are collapsing lists, but these are only available in the paid workspaces. You have a three dot menu on each list, which allows you to do various things like you can see right here, adding a card, copying the list, moving the list, watching the list, which works the same way as the board, changing the color of the list, which is also a paid feature. And then it gives you kind of some beginnings, like if you want to use something as a trigger for an automation, those show up here, or you can archive a list. And then you've also got this little icon right here that says create from template. That's actually about creating cards. And you don't have any card templates here. I don't have any card templates here because we haven't created any. We're not going to do that in this video. We'll do that in the future, but you can easily create a new card on a particular list using that little icon right there. But let's go ahead and just create our first card and take a super quick tour of the card. Again, we have the card's name where we can click in and edit the name if we need to. We can watch it, same functionality as everywhere else. You can join the card, you can add other members, maybe assign a task to someone this way. This is where you can add labels to the card in particular or create new ones. You can create checklists on a particular card, add due dates and start dates, add attachments, put a card cover, which can be just like the background. It can be a color or it can be an image. Okay, so we can go ahead and add that. Or if you want it to have a little bit smoother, sleeker look, you can actually click it over this way and change how it looks over there. We could talk about that in the future. You've got custom fields. Again, this is just another way to create the custom fields like you could up in the three dot menu. Just note that if you create a custom field from the card, it's still going to apply to every card on that board. You can add power-ups. You can add automation buttons here. Move, copy, or mirror a card. Mirroring is new and exciting, but it only comes in the paid plans. You can make the card a template like we saw a minute ago, and you can archive or share that card. So I know I just dropped a lot on you. Feel free to go back, rewatch certain sections to kind of catch everything that I'm saying. And before you try to move on to the next video, pause for just a minute here and create yourself a couple of lists. They don't need to be the same as mine, but create a few, create a card or two, and maybe even go in and create a couple of labels so that you are ready to move forward with me in the next video. The online tools for your business do not need to be complicated and overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy. I hope you liked that video and more importantly that you found it helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing it with a fellow solopreneur. And make sure you check out the description for links to how we can connect and maybe even work together.